Why did Sharpay and Ryan hate each other in real life? How did the pressures of High School Musical lead Efron to fame, money, and eventually rehab? And why was High School Musical called out for whitewashing its cast? Hi, I'm Janet. Sibling rivalry. From tabloid scandals, secret revelations, hidden production secrets, and on-set fights, it seems that High School Musical was more than its catchy songs and lively choreography. Turns out that behind the scenes, there were a series of dark truths that the film's producers hoped would never make it into the light. One of which was the film's greatest behind-the-scenes sibling rivalry. Even though they ruled East High, had the money, popularity, and were seen to be the ultimate sibling duo, they had one thing stepping in their way. Their mutual hatred of one another. While the Evans twins would actively bop to the top on screen, it was when the cameras stopped rolling where the true drama began. It was reported that while Ashley Tisdale and Lucas Grabeel played on-screen siblings, they couldn't stand one another in real life. In fact, their serious disdain for one another was a major issue during the filming of the musical franchise. Chatting to Billboard, Ashley Tisdale talked about the bad blood between the two actors, saying, We hated each other. Not kidding. I think we just didn't know each other. I was definitely a lot like Sharpay, and Lucas was like, Who is this person? The source of the feuding was given the fact that Lucas found Ashley to be quite the diva, both on and off the set, and found it difficult to work with the blonde-haired starlet. Thankfully, the two grew to like one another after interventions were made from the crew and other cast members. A stint in rehab. It seems that the pressures of being a Hollywood teen heartthrob proved too much for Zac Efron. After being thrust into the limelight, having a string of famous faces pining for his heart, and having back-to-back -back movie deals, it seemed the limelight eventually wore him out. In order to keep up with his demanding schedule and the newfound fame courtesy of High School Musical, Efron turned to two things he thought would help him cope drugs, and alcohol. And well, it completely wrecked his life and promised to derail his acting career. Efron eventually checked himself into rehab for five months in order to get himself clean. And it worked. For a few months, that is. Efron later relapsed whilst filming his next comedy movie, Neighbors. Afraid that he could lose his life to these substances, he sought out help from another celebrity rehab facility and actively dedicated his time to their 12-step program. Zach is currently clean and sober and continues to live by the philosophy that they shared during his stay at the rehab, as he vows never to go back to that dark place again. So while High School Musical may have brought him immense fame, it also introduced Efron to the dark side of Hollywood, whitewashing of key characters. In a world that is filled with various cultures, ethnicities, and races, casting directors of High School Musical wanted to showcase true diversity when casting the show's lead characters, starting with Sharpay and Ryan Evans, who were originally meant to be black characters. The aim behind this was to ensure sure that the franchise was racially accurate and diverse when depicting a high school environment. But as we know, that didn't happen, as the rules eventually went to Ashley Tisdale and Lucas Grabeel. Casting execs claimed that the audition process ran into issues when they were trying to find the perfect pair to take on those roles. According to BuzzFeed, actor Corbin Blue shared that casting found someone to play Sharpay, but they could not find a black equivalent for Ryan. And then I think they found Ashley, so they decided to cast Sharpay and Ryan as Caucasian. But this led to major internal conflicts, as producers believed that the casting directors did not put in the necessary effort into finding black actors for the respective lead roles. Their cries went unheard. Eventually, a supposed compromise came in the form of Taylor McKessie and Chad Danforth, who were played by actors of color Monique Coleman and Corbin Blue. But the debate is still out on whether or not this was a fair casting call or not. Run-ins with the law they were playing in one of Disney's highest grossing films to ever be created, and yet they would ruin their careers before they even took off. Let's throw it back to the final High School Musical installment, shall we? Enter Rocket Man, played by Matt Prokop, and Little Donnie, played by Justin Martin. Both characters were looking to step into the shoes of their on-screen idols, Troy and Chad. But it seemed that being the next greatest basketball players at East High wasn't their only challenge. It was actually staying on the right side of the law. After being cast in High School Musical 3, senior year, it seemed that Matt Prokop had it all. The successful franchise and a super famous fiance, Sarah Hyland, too. He was living in bliss. Until the two broke up in what would 
turn out to be a tabloid frenzy after Highland detailed the alleged abusive nature of their relationship. Highland would eventually file for a restraining order after mentioning that she feared for her life, as Matt would allegedly physically assault her. And well, it seems like his on-screen best friend Donnie would also have his career halted after a major incident too. Following the success of High School Musical 3, with a budding career on the horizon, it seemed like Martin was just about to begin making a name for himself. When scandals struck, According to E! Online, Martin fled the scene of a shooting with a gun still in his hand. Boston police stated that Martin, quote, allegedly pointed the gun at officers and a second man opened fire. Officers fired at Martin, who was not hit, before getting him to the ground. Martin was charged and sentenced to serve 18 months in federal prison. And so, while these two may have been seeking fame, it sounds like scandals unfortunately found the two of them. A franchise-wrecking photo scandal. After years of auditions, callbacks, and rejections, Vanessa Hudgens finally made it to the big screen. And even though she was gracing the cover of major magazines, being photographed by famous photographers, and even victim to the infamous paparazzi shots, it was her private photos that would ignite her very first public scandal. Known for being one of the main faces of Disney Channel, Vanessa's good girl image that Disney insisted she maintained crumbled after her nude photos were leaked all over the internet. Fans were shocked and disappointed. Disney execs threatened to have her removed from the franchise, and her status as Disney's sweetheart quickly evaporated. Many had speculated that her images were for her then-boyfriend and co-star Zac Efron, though some believed that the incident would have been the end of her career and potentially have forced casting directors to recast the role of Gabriela Montez. Disney decided that she would remain part of the high school musical cast, under strict rules, of course. Vanessa was contractually bound to lay low whilst filming and avoid being seen by paparazzi until the scandal died down. She was also asked to hire a lawyer to have the photos removed from the internet and so she was able to reprise her famous role as Gabriella. Troy Bolton's real voice. If we're being honest, it seemed that Zac Efron was made to play Troy Bolton. He had the luscious hair, the swoon-worthy baby blue eyes, the basketball skills, and a charm that had every teen of all over the world completely and utterly under his spell. But there was one problem. He didn't have the voice of Troy Bolton. After the successes of High School Musical 1, it was later revealed that Zac Efron did not actually sing any of Troy Bolton's songs. His famous songs from Get Your Head in the Game to the reprised of What I've Been Looking For were actually sung by actor Drew Seeley. Drew had originally auditioned for the leading role of Troy Bolton, but lost out to Zac. But before they could dismiss Seeley, they realized that Zac didn't exactly have the vocal range to carry out an entire musical. And so, Seeley was sent straight to the studio to record with the rest of the cast, and Efron was told to lip sync throughout the entire movie with Seeley's backing track playing. But Efron wasn't going to give up. He threw himself into an extensive vocal training course. He worked with famous musical coaches and perfected his harmonies and improved his vocal range. In fact, his singing capabilities improved so much that Efron would end up singing in High School Musical 2 and 3 without the help of Seeley, revealing Ryan's sexuality. From the flamboyant outfits to the flashy matching hats and general zest for life, it seemed that High School Musical fans were happy to tag Ryan Evans as fun, talented, and gay. And Lucas Grabeel was curious about his character's sexuality too. In fact, he often shared with the film's writers that he wanted them to openly explore Ryan's sexuality within the franchise. Lucas even famously asked directors to have Ryan come out in High School Musical 3, senior year, to bring some closure to the speculation. Speaking to TMZ, Lucas Grabeel said, I came up to Kenny one day and was like, hey, so can we talk about the character for a second? Ryan's gay, right? He was like, well, I mean, it's a touchy subject sometime with children's programming. I'm not sure if Disney is ready now for that kind of thing, but High School Musical director Kenny Ortega was right, as Disney execs weren't on board with the idea of having an openly gay character at the time. It is said that the film's producers believed that it was too controversial of a topic for their young audience and decided to leave viewers to draw their own conclusions when it came to Ryan's sexuality. But we thought we would do a little digging, as we could not let this mystery go unanswered. And well, Kenny Ortega let us in on the insider scoop. I absolutely agree that he is gay, and I think we have an opportunity here to showcase a real person, said Ortega, as he advocated for fans to discuss his sexuality outside of the film itself. And while some fans were ecstatic at 
the news. Others were disappointed that the franchise refused to address such an important storyline. Several fans even took to social media to ask the famous television channel if they were homophobic, given the fact that they did not want to address sexuality in their most famous film. But execs chose to ignore the backlash and urged fans to remember that the films were about the music and dance routines and less about the sexual orientation of the film's characters. Ouch. What are your thoughts on this? And what are your thoughts on the film's secrets? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.